In questa nona giornata della 69esima edizione della Mostra Internazionale d'Arte Cinematografica di Venezia, i protagonisti sono Robert Redford e Shia Laboeuf. I due, arrivati al Lido per presentare fuori concorso il film diretto e interpretato dallo stesso Redford, The Company You Keep. The Company You Keep è una vincente storia tratta dal romanzo di Neil Gordon che racconta la vicenda di Jim Grant Redford, avvocato per i diritti civili e padre di Isabel. Jim viene messo alle strette da un giovane e ambizioso giornalista, Shia, che smaschera la sua vera identità di ex militante di Weather Underground, latitante per un omicidio avvenuto negli anni 70. Ecco alcune scene del film e gli interventi dei due in conferenza stampa. Do you still have your friend in the FBI field office? I'm not sure she ever wants to speak to me again. Get me something and you can keep your job. I think that uh, I was fascinated by American history and when, when this event took place about the weather underground going to violence, um, i felt to make a film about that, it was too close to the violence. It was too close to that time. Now, um, 30 years later, it seemed um, that you could now tell this story because it was now a piece of American history. When it, when it first happened, it wasn't history yet. It was a live event that was still reverberating through the, the culture. Now, you could look back on it as you could the time of McCarthy, the time of Watergate, the time of the Second World War, you could look back on these moments and say, oh, that's now a piece of American history. So I think that was the, the basic reason. And on a, on a more personal, humane level, I think I was taken with the idea that this could bear similarities to a very famous classic, Les Miserables, about a person who Uh, is a fugitive without his true name and he's pursued by an inspector who is dogged and will not give up. I think those are the two things that drew me to the project. What's wrong? You look weird. I'm fine, honey. Can I just see the case file for all time's sake? Do you think because we hooked up in college I'm going to give you access to FBI wiretaps? Wiretaps? We talked to Jim Grant. Who's Jim Grant? He's a lawyer, man. We don't have the same at stake, I think. Uh, you know, Bob's generation, they put a gun in your hand and told you to go run through the jungle and shoot people. And you didn't really have a choice. My generation is very different. Uh, we're not being asked of the same things. We're just broke. Uh, so I think um, it's easier to deal with being broke than being asked to kill. Obviously a responsible single parent, pillar of society. Nothing I can turn to a story. Mr. Grant, I'm just trying to put the pieces together. I don't have time for this. I look at the man's history, nothing. The man doesn't exist before 1979. Did I think at the time, I was sympathetic to the cause. I, I believe they had a good reason to rebel. I think they had a good reason. Uh, at the same time, I felt that you could see the handwriting on the wall, that it was going to self-destruct, that the cause would eat itself because of ego and because of the fact that everybody in the cause began to get so pleased with themselves that it was only a question of time before they would turn, against, they, they would turn in on themselves. And that made me sad because I thought the cause was a just one. I thought the war was wrong. I thought they had every right to refuse to go to that war because it was wrong. It was an unjust war. Um, But that was just my opinion as a slightly outside person because I was starting a career and raising a family at that time. I, I was not politically involved. We're not going to school. We're going to go on a little trip. I think he knows how to run, which means he has an advantage. I got him. He's stairwell. Don't move. Stay right there. Kids our age are being murdered by our government. We made mistakes, but we were right. I think in general, what I experienced uh, in taking the script that I was given and putting it on the floor, meaning going and, you know, being with reporters at the LA Times for a while, there's far less idealism in reporting. There's far less idealism in journalism. Journalism is, is glory-based. It's whoever gets the story first. That's more important than the story most of the time, at least in my generation of journalists. And there's a great book that Bill gave me early on called The Journalist, uh, Journalist and the Murderer, which explores the whole idea of, 
you know, where do, where do ethics come into play? When is it not about the story? When do you put the, the pad and the pen down to help the woman getting raped? You know, um, and I think that this script explores a lot of that. I mean, that's what I'm juggling throughout most of this movie. I don't when does the reporting you. stop? When does my humanity kick in? My job. FBI was my apartment. They're pissed because I'm doing their job better than they are. You're about to do a lot of damage to a lot of people who have no idea how much. I don't want anything to do with this. Did you kill that man? Of course not. Right now, nothing he's doing makes any sense if he's guilty. Got him. You have a full green light. I don't think he's running away. I think he's trying to clear his name. Secrets are a dangerous thing. We all think we want to know them. But you also discover something about yourself. I hope you're ready for that.